Okay. Thank you, dear. I can say that because you're my wife. This I'm saying that somebody else did. All right, Mark chapter 1. Now, this morning we were studying the miracle of Jesus. Uh, one of the, it was number four that he did. And when we, we stopped in the 1 verse 28 after he you know, brings out the, the unclean spirit in this man that was in the synagogue and we showed the demon influence on people. As we said, the lost can be possessed, but the saved cannot be possessed by the devil. But we can be oppressed, we can be depressed, we can be obsessed by the uh, influence of satanic powers. We cannot be possessed because we belong to God. Amen. And uh, we remember the day we got saved, amen? amen? Remember that wonderful day that you received eternal life <coughs> and your life just started blossoming and God changed you from the inside out? Religion says you change from the outside in. And that uh, doesn't work. It's not in the Bible at all. <clears throat> so here, we're going to pick up and study the uh, next miracle, which a lot of people over, overlook. And uh, we see here uh, Simon Peter's women. Now, the Pope, you know, the Catholic priests, they uh, don't allow their so-called ministers to, to marry, have uh, have a family, have wives. and uh, But here we see that that's not in the Bible either. That's just malarkey. That's an Irish word for, for uh, a lie. Amen. So here we have Simon Peter's women. We see a uh, mention of two of them here in Mark 1, 29 to 31. <clears throat> Let's read 29 to 31. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue where they were at, which is a church, a Jewish church meeting in a smaller group. And they entered into the house of Simon, meaning Simon Peter, and Andrew, with James and John. Uh, but Simon, Simon's what? Wife. Simon's wife's who? Wife. There's two women. She lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her, means immediately. Anon is an old word for immediately. And anon they tell him, Jesus here, of her in verse 31, and he came and he being who? Jesus. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. The Lord, we ask you now to guide us in these just a couple of verses tonight, but there's quite a bit in there. So help us now to absorb the truths contained in this supernatural book now and help us grow in the Lord and see folks saved through our own service uh, through our local churches. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so we see a, a few things here. Uh, you know, they got Grandparents Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. How come they don't have Mother-in-Law Day? We ought to start something, don't you think? All in favor? The women will be the only ones raising their hands. <laughs> I see that. So uh, we, we have this uh, story about a mother-in-law. And there's a few things that we see uh, in these short verses. And uh, in verse 29, we see at least four things out of these verses. Uh, she, it says, first she lived with Simon and Andrew. They were brothers. And so in verse 29 and forth with, that means... When they left the synagogue, they went. The disciples went with Jesus. They went to Peter's house. And forthwith, being going forth with the crowd, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. And, of course, we see Jesus is here as well. So they go into Simon, uh, Simon's house. Now, Simon Peter was not a prophet. Uh, he was not a priest, like they try to make him a so-called New Testament priest. There's no such thing as a New Testament priest in the Bible. It's uh, preachers, pastors, evangelists, deacons, 
but you do not find the New Testament. We are under a new covenant, not the old Jewish covenant of the Old Testament. We are New Testament Christians if we're Christians at all, right? That's what the Lord's Supper is all about, introducing the new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we see that uh, Simon's house, now who's, who is going to be the second pastor of the first church? You know your Bible, you don't know who this is. Who was the first pastor of the first Christian church? That was Jesus, he started it, right? Was he not the chief shepherd? And was the good shepherd? Uh, well, he was the first pastor of the first church on the earth, and that was Jesus Christ. The second, we pick up in the book of Acts, chapter 1, 2, and, and after that, uh, Peter was a spokesperson for the new church of Jerusalem. So he was the second pastor. He was not a priest. He was not a prophet. He was a pastor because he's the one who taught in the book of First Peter, chapter 5, I believe it is, about feeding the flock, right? So he was teaching them how to be a pastor, an overseer, a shepherd. <clears throat> so he was no pope, as they want you to think that he was the first uh, priest of the Catholic Church. But that's a lot of, <clears throat> what they call lunch meat and bologna there. Second, so she lived with Simon and Andrew. In the verse 30, we go on, and uh, we see that secondly, she lay sick with a fever. So uh, she's not doing so well. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever. And uh, then they tell Jesus about it. But uh, we see here, <clears throat> as we say, the religion, uh, the Romanist, that's what they used to be called, the Roman Catholic Church. The book of Romans is not to the Roman Catholic Church, it's to Christian, born-again Christians who were living in Rome. You know, who, uh, who was the army stationed in Jerusalem? The Roman army. Who, who was there at the cross to crucify Jesus? The Roman army. And they say that quite a few of those soldiers were saved and born again uh, when Jesus was resurrected and Jesus died on the cross and they went back to Rome, Italy and spread the gospel that's how the gospel got to Rome was the soldiers themselves and uh, we have even in this Ukrainian war you have Russian soldiers defecting leaving Russia because they want freedom too a uh, uh, news report said that some of the Russian soldiers were destroying their own vehicles so they wouldn't have to fight the Ukrainians. They were, they were running for freedom, disappearing. And uh, so we had that going on at the cross of Calvary, going back to Rome, Italy, where the, uh, where the Caesar was. <clears throat> Putin of his day, you might say. So we see here that she lay sick with a fever. We have no name for this woman. Uh, one writer said that she could be considered the first female disciple of Jesus Christ as we see the story. But I don't know that that would be true. I think the uh, disciples' wives probably were uh, before her. But we have a lot of conjecture and opinions on who this woman was. No one can name what her name was. We, we don't know. But she's an important player here in our story. So, but Simon, Simon's wife's mother, which means Simon had a wife. So he wasn't a Catholic priest. You bring that up if you have some Catholic friends and, uh, and, and people that, you know, think that the Pope, uh, it'd be good if they did have, guess what, if, they, if the priests had families of their own, they wouldn't be molesting other people's children. Yep. They wouldn't be a bunch of drunks and uh, hom homo uh, epidemic within that religion because they would have their own families and they would have a normal life. But uh, it goes way back to Babylonianism, back in the book of Genesis, uh, under Nimrod and all those weird superstitions that they had thousands of years before that. It's carried over into modern life. <clears throat> so she lived with Simon and Andrew, and secondly, she lay sick with a fever. And his mother-in-law. I mean, remember that song years ago, uh, back in the, what, 50s or 60s, called Mother-in-Law? 
What a catchy tune that was. How many have never heard that song? Look it up on your phone, mother-in-law. Okay, it's, it's kind of a catchy little thing. And uh, thirdly, we see here, look at verse 31. Thirdly, she let Jesus lift her up. She's, how many have had a fever before? I mean, a real fever. You just thought you were going to die. Right. Well, that's where she's at. She's really needing help. But it says here in 31, and then they tell him of her in 30, and so they tell Jesus, we got a problem here. Uh, shouldn't we first, when we have a problem, shouldn't we first go to Jesus Christ <laughs> instead of the uh, doctors, the hospitals, and, and the bank for a loan? And it says he came and took her by the hand. He, he came and he took her by the hand. So she let him lift her up. She's allowing this. Remember the years when we fought God, when we were under conviction of our sin and we don't want to be around Christians? I remember very well, 50 years ago, when I was 27 years old, under great conviction of my sinful life. Nothing working out because of my sinful life. And, uh, but he came and took her by the hand and so we see here, there's the fourth thing. She lived a life of love for the church, you'll see here in a second. So as we go on, and so he came and took her by the hand, number one. And second, he did what? He lifted her up. And what happened next? Immediately the fever left her. And then what happened after that? She went and served God. She said, if I ever lived through this, I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We can avoid a lot of trouble by just simply serving the Lord. Amen. Just serve God. I was thinking about standing out on the street with a big sign. Exalt God and save America. <laughs> That's what it takes. And the government won't mention God and nobody, everybody is afraid to mention Jesus Christ in public lest they lose their job and their friends and all that. But we see here, so first she lived with Simon and Andrew. Second, she lay sick with a fever. Thirdly, she let Jesus lift her up. Have, have we let Jesus lift us up? Remember the first song we sang tonight was Love Lifted Me? Yes. That was, that's, that's the theme here. And so fourthly, she lived a life of love uh, for the church. And you have the apostles, you have Jesus Christ there. And so she went out from there and she served the Lord through this first church uh, that Jesus built. And so we have people go to church, but they don't serve through their church. Some Christians don't even have a church. There's so many millions of folks in America that have never been in the doors of a church before. Yeah. If you talk to people on the streets, young people, they, they've never darkened the door of a Christian church. Uh, they've gone every place else, but they've never gone to a church building. So we have here uh, in verse 31, he lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. So she served the first church of Jesus Christ there in Peter's house. Now, uh, this is a picture. Look at verse 31 because you have, the, you have the picture of the Christian life uh, in, a, in an object lesson here. So he came and took her by the hand. That's what you have to do to be saved. You have to come to the Lord and you have to let him take control of your life. Amen. I mean, if you're not willing to make him the Lord of your life, you're not going to want to be saved anyway. Some people just want to escape hell and some just want their bills paid. And some want a million other things, but they just don't want the Lord himself. People love God for what he can do, but not for who he is. I counsel people, if you're going to get married, do not marry somebody for anything other than who they are. If you don't love them for who they are, you better not get married. Because they, they have other intentions, and they won't live with you very long. He came and took her by the hand. So this is the first thing in salvation. You come to the Lord and you let him take control. And then what happens when you get saved? Guess what? 
lift her up. Remember when you got when I, when you when you asked the Lord to save you. Remember the the feeling that came over you of relief and peace is the first thing you notice. And uh, he lifted us up out of, the, out of the mire of sin. And knowing our sins were forgiven forever. Uh, we're going to heaven. Man, that, that don't make you feel good. I would reckon. And it always did. And so we have a salvation. And then lifted her up. We see the word sanctification. As he starts to change our life. Remember that? As soon as we, we start reading the Bible. And it, it started changing our life. From the inside out. And then immediately the fever left her. We have a separation here. And the fever left, right? So now she's separated from the, the thing that's killing her. And now she has this life of separation. And, uh, and then fourthly, she has ministered, and that's the word service. Now she's serving the Lord. So the plan of salvation does go like that. You get saved. And then God sets you apart, starts working on your life and supernaturally through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And then you are separated from their old past. And uh, that's what repentance means. It means turning in a new direction. And so God does this uh, when we get saved. And then we, we have this zeal. The Holy Spirit now lives within us. And now we have this desire to serve God instead of instead of serving sin in ourselves. Do you get the drift here? Yeah. Anybody understand that's, that's the way it works for every person that's a Christian? It works just like we see here in this mother-in-law's life. Amen. So she lived a life of love for the church and for her Savior in verse 31. So, I uh, wrote back in 1994, so let's... Uh, be a lovely mother-in-law. We got any lovely mother-in-laws here? <laughs> Don't put your hands up. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> and also, let's love our mother-in-laws, right? And I tried to love my mother-in-law, <clears throat> my wife's mom, and my wife tried to love my mother, which was her mother-in-law. <clears throat> we could both say they're in heaven. They both professed to know the Lord and they gave us good raisins as much as they could uh, coming up uh, in the 70s and the 60s and the 50s. And now, here's a couple of questions before we leave here. Have we got anything out of the, out of the study? Sure we have. You always get something out of the Bible. It's there. Even if the preacher's no good, the word's still there. So just read the Bible and, and shut out the preacher, right? <laughs> Here's a question, uh, class, okay? Who was, listen, who was not the first pope? <laughs> who? <laughs> Peter, who was not the first pope? How do we know that? Because he had a mother and had a wife, mother-in-law. <laughs> sure he had a mother. <laughs> Second question, what was the woman's problem? She had a fever. She had a fever. Simple enough. <clears throat> Third question. Who did she need to help her? Jesus. Who was the only one that could help her? <clears throat> Who's the only one that can help us? Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Son of God, but He's also God the Son. God became a man and dwelt <clears throat> among us, it says. He became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, amen. Another question. Who did she serve when she got better? She served the Lord. She served the church that was there, which he, where the, all the officials of the church were there. She ministered back to them because they had ministered to her. And Peter took care of his mother-in-law. Aren't you glad? Amen. Another question, another question. Who did she live with? Simple. Who did she live with? Peter. Who? All in favor say aye. <laughs> Who did she live with? Simon and Andrew. Simon and Andrew. Right, both of them. And uh, his brother. Another question. Uh, what was her title called? What was her title called? 
No, what does it say there? What is it? What is it? Simon's wife's mother. That's her title. Okay. So have you learned anything at all? Yeah, let's get saved. Let's let God change our life, sanctification. Let's let God help us separate from the old life. And then let's serve the Lord. That's a simple enough. And God will bless that, let me tell you, right away. It starts right away. It doesn't happen six years from now or four uh, four months from now. When we determine to do things God's way, then only then does things turn around. Because God wants to bless us. He doesn't want to punish us. He wants to bless us. Heaven's just going to be an eternal blessing, don't you know? I mean, we'll, we'll have nothing but happiness, contentment. Uh, we won't have to even worry about the city utilities bill coming in heaven. I mean, well, you know, they say, oh, people are watching us from heaven. No, no, they're not. They're, they're in heaven. They're not. Why, why go to heaven if you have to live earth in heaven? In heaven, it's an eternal home of God. And God wants us to Give him all of our sins so he can lift us up. Now let's turn in our hymn books and let's sing a song before we leave, an invitation song, we might call it. And uh, go to 549. 549. We haven't sung this song in years, probably. I had to practice it. So, anyway, thank you, Peter's. Mother-in-law, 549. What's the name of the song? He lifted me. He lifted me. How many remember this old tune? All right. Let's all stand and sing this before we go serve the Lord with gladness. 549. In loving kindness, Jesus came to. Well, let's try it. Who knows it well? All right. Okay, Deanna. Give us, let's go. In loving kindness, Jesus came, my soul in mercy to reclaim, and from the depths of sin and shame. Thank you. 
Lisa Lyons, she's coming up from Texas tomorrow to try to sell their motor home because you know that Bill got their missionaries to Japan they came home and they got COVID and uh, Bill died here in town and ruined everything, the whole, everything's upside down. So it's going to be a tough week or two while she's here trying to get all their belongings out, storage. We pray for Lisa Lyons, if you would, and her uh, family as she starts her life over again. She got COVID, almost killed her too. And it's taken months for her to get Back in September, this happened, and she's just getting the strength now to uh, leave Texas with her son to come up back up here. <clears throat> so let's be in prayer. We have still COVID. Uh, don't play with this stuff, okay? Do not play with this stuff. <clears throat> Brother uh, Sowards could be here tonight, but he's a missionary to the Native Americans. Brother Harjo down in uh, Oklahoma, uh, he got COVID. And, it didn't kill him right then, but just this, the other day he died eventually from COVID. We've known them for many, many years. It hit the reservations extra hard. I never saw it coming back in March of 20 when it first started. And one uh, reservation in the Navajos out in New Mexico, uh, within a month, 49 people died on that reservation. Somebody took it back. And their church services spread like wildfire. The, the first strain, which is the strongest, the meanest. So don't play games with this stuff, you know. Uh, just don't don't pretend it's not around. It, it is around, and it's going to be one of those things we'll live with till Jesus comes. And uh, so just uh, be be wise. Don't be fearful. Be careful and be wise in your choices. How many want to live a pretty long life? Anybody here? Well, you don't get old accident, I'm telling you. You gotta plan it out. And don't let other people ruin your life, okay? Brother Dan, would you close for us tonight in prayer? Lord, we thank you uh, for this opportunity to open your word again. We thank you for the message tonight. Reminding us of the sequence, Lord, in our salvation. Mm -hmm. How uh, how we uh, came to a saving knowledge, Father. We just thank you for that. We thank you for the blessings in our lives. We thank you for this church. Serve here. We ask the Lord that you continue the blessings you have. We thank you for the visitors tonight. We ask mm -hmm. and pray that you bless them, encourage them. Mm -hmm. Lord, as we go to our homes, we ask your protection, your guidance. Lord, help us to be a witness for you. Help yeah. us to be a testimony, a living witness, Lord. Mm -hmm. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Get around and say hello and goodbye. Thank you.